Oh, well, hi. I've um, mixed up my beautiful white, nice and thick base, just global white and flow troll, nothing else. Then I've mixed up some of this gorgeous lilac colour. Oh God, it's such a shame you can't see it. You'll see it over in the light a bit, bit better soon. Um, and that is a Perlex Duo Violet Brass colour. And what I did was I added some of the powder into the bottom of the cup, a dash of alcohol, brought that to a little bit of blend and then just added Floetrol. I've mixed up some Impasto Metallic Ice Gold just with Floetrol. And now finally, oh no, there's another one that I've done too. This is the Metallic Cobalt. Nice. And finally, I'm just trying to work out what I'll do for my last colour because I feel like I want three colours. Oh, I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to use the Metallic Bronze. So just to show you, for those who like to see how everyone mixes, because everyone does it a little bit differently, and none are right or wrong. I'm always the first to say that. It's just a difference. Remembering that consistency, there's no right or wrong consistency either. You just get a different outcome. Okay, so I'm gonna actually add a dab of alcohol to that, because I'm not gonna use any silicon. And that's just gonna be the way that I make this a little bit thinner. I know you can't see it very well, but you will get the gist. That just brings that down a bit. Inconsistency, twice the amount of Floetrol. So that's one part paint, two parts Floetrol. And mixing, mixing, mixing. Because it's a metallic, I've noticed that the metallics in the Global range are a bit goopier. And to enhance this, I'm going to actually get a little bit of um, brown mica pigment from A1 Pigments, blend it down with alcohol and add it into that. I'll just find it. I shan't be long. Oh, it's over here somewhere, guys. <clears throat> In my other videos, you'll see me going on and on and on about this brown nut. I really, really love it. It... If you've ever used turquoise and browns together, uh, this brown nut is just off its nut in terms of richness and shimmer and metallicness. It's just gorgeous. So I've added just this little much, little much, how do you like my language today? Into the cup. I'm flustered, can you tell? A drop or a drizzle of alcohol. And then just swish that around. And it blends in really, really nicely. And now I'll add that into the flow troll and paint. And it just enhances it. Oh, it's a bit too thin now. But believe me, it will thicken up quite quickly because the alcohol, sorry that you're not in view, the alcohol evaporates, but it still does its job. So there we go. And it's got a few streaks in there, but I actually like that. Uh, strangely, they don't stay upon the drying. All right, so let's set up and pour. It's only a three color pour, that's interesting for me. Okay, here we are. I'm ready to layer my paints. I'm just gonna be using these little cups. And I'll start with a little bit of white in the bottom. And then I will add the browns. Hello. Oh, I'm back again. You wouldn't believe it that someone walked in. Of course they do. It's almost like I put the camera on and it's a jinx. So where were we up to? We've put a little bit of white in, but I feel like I want to start again. So I'm not really starting again, just putting the tiniest bit more in so I can um, 
work out where I am with my process. Oh, the paint's a bit drippy. I'll just put it there. And I'm going to put my brown on top. And I still haven't decided what um, what I'm going to do. I think I feel like it might be a dirty pour. I love a dirty pour. Oh, I'm going to put my blue next to my brown. Oh, did I tell you there's no silicon in this? Only alcohol. So this is 100% alcohol, like about a teaspoon in each one during the mixing. Oh, this is the white diamond. So it's not the flat white or, you know, your titanium white. It's a sparkly white that has diamond little gold flickies through it. And we probably won't see what it's like until it uh, dries. Put the purple next to that. Um, a little bit more white. Maybe I'll do one flip cup. Yeah, I'm going to do a flip cup, one flip cup and a bit of a dirty pour as well with one of the cups. It's only a little bit, so hopefully I'll have a nice, uh, only a little bit. What I mean is it's they're only little cups, so I should have a nice amount of negative space. But you know how many times I say that and forget just how far the paint can spread and what its capacity is? It's ridiculous. You'd think I'd um, be on top of it these days, but I'm not. I tend to be really slack in the way that I record my processes which is why I started doing videoing in the first instance so that I could go back and look at what I'd done and how I'd achieved it because I don't write things down and I'm in the process of developing up a little bit of a diary or journal structure for myself that suits me because uh, of course everyone has different ways of recording stuff and how they'd like to do it um, and I'm hopefully we'll have good luck with knowing a bit more about what I'm doing or keeping on top of my own stuff anyway pouring the rest of the white out I'm going to give myself a decent kind of background you know lay it flat lay out that white I'm feeling a bit unco. I haven't done a, an acrylic for oh, a couple of weeks. I've been right into the resin. Just getting my spatula and just pull that out. I'm not going to be too um, fluffed about the coverage. And I, you know what? How many times I say that and then all of a sudden I am, what was the word I used? Fluffed? How hilarious. But just, you know, I remind myself that I don't mind a little bit of raw canvas sticking out. More often than not these days, I tend to be covering my acrylic pores with resin. So that um, if there's a bit of incongruence or non-continuity or just to talk plain English, a difference between the raw canvas and the painted canvas, once the resin's applied to it, that soon resolved and it's all nice and smooth but that's a nice kind of flush finish well nice enough for today do you know if i've got my torch near me at all probably not because there's a few little air bubbles here that i wouldn't mind just popping out before we lay more paint on top of it that'll do got my uh, paper towel here to get most of that paint off before it dries and take shape. I'll just go look for a gun. When I say a gun, I need a huge torch. I've got my huge ass torch. Probably set it on fire. Oh, but it's got alcohol in it, so I do want to be careful. Woo! This one, I've had, I don't know, I've had a bit of problems with that one. There's a bit more bubbles. I'm just going to tap it down. And that helps bring up any air bubbles to the surface. And I think I'll do my flip cup here, drag and pull. Oh no, maybe I'll do it in the middle. Okay. You ready? Let me 
can see some nice shapes occurring there. Yeah, and I'll pull this up in a minute and then I think I'll just do some dirty pouring around it. Do you reckon that'll do? I'm feeling really impatient today. I wonder why. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try and bring it here. A lot of paint, isn't there? Pull that through there. And it looks like there's some nice effects happening. Looks like a fish. getting some more of those air bubbles out. And watching it evolve. Some interesting shapes. I'm actually more looking forward to seeing what this effect is like dry and so I'll make sure that no matter what I do post um, this dry in a few days even though I'm going to put this up today just because you know, I'm not that crash hot on it. So I'm actually going to do a ring pour on top of it. Um, and I'm going to start by adding this last bit of blue into it so that that can push some of the paint out. Because the ring pour will push the paint outwards like that. So let's do a puddle pour to help move that paint along. Of course, um, you know how I was talking about wanting to have some negative space. Yeah, there's not going to be much negative space here at all, especially by the time I've done this uh, ring pour component with what's in the other cup. Um, it's a good exercise in terms of what you can do when you don't like what you've flipped out. Ready? Here we go. Getting my finger ready to get that middle part. And now, ah, oh, stretched it out. All right, well, what I'm gonna do is actually let this sit for about five or 10 minutes before I tilt it. So I'll pop you off and we'll come back in five or 10 minutes and just see what angle I wanna tilt it to. It's looking um, nice. I'll give you a close up of it in a second. Well, here it is as a close-up. I did actually give it a little torch. Um, just a quick flip, just to get some of the air bubbles out. And as you can see, it's created some beautiful planetary cells. Oh, they're just gorgeous. So when it comes to my tilting, I'm going to have to be quite careful because I do like this quite a bit now. But what I want to do is just probably get this to meet up on this point of the canvas this part covered here and then leave this part nicely negative spaced so there won't be a lot of tilting going on all right so we'll have a look at it um, in action with the tilt probably in about another five minutes okay it's tilting time all right so I'm just going to slowly bring it back this way, then back to the middle, and then over that way, and then back to the middle, and then that is it. You know, how, how nice and... Um, I might turn it so you can see it. All right. I can 
tilt it to you. Slow. Bring it back a little bit. Nicely stretched out. Coming over this way, just the tiniest bit. Back into the middle. Oh, look at my impatience, I'm pushing it along. This funny jiggle. I'm having to give myself some discipline and put it down because it's actually looking quite good. Um, I feel I may want it to roll off the edge a little bit more in, toward me. So sorry that you can't quite see it. There we go, I've got that now. lines the cells are stretched out but boy the shaping in them is really really gorgeous and delightful and I'm so interested to see what these metallic effects are going to be like when they're dry okay composition wise it's really interesting and nice so you've got this whole corner and it's fundamentally going by the rule of thirds we've got two thirds covered up with the canvas we've got two uh, one two three of the four um, sides kissed and touched by paint and this negative space here is quite standy outish and this little part here is really helping these beautiful delicate lines here have a place of their own on the canvas. I'm gonna give this a tap tap and now a flip with the torch and then I'm gonna step away. In it and I'm really pleased with how I've prevented myself from over over tipping it let's get you off and have a look so here we are coming into it I forgot to tell you it's a 16 inch by 20 inch frame so look at those that beautiful delicate work up there how gorgeous and we did end up getting some of the cells re-emerging with that torching and once I saw that I was really careful not to over torch because I really like having areas that aren't so busy with cells yet more have emerged even since um, I did that torching I love the colors and I'm really, like I've said a few times, looking forward to seeing how the metallics dry together. There's the nice diamond ice in there, which will be much more prevalent even next to the white upon drying. So I will put this video up now and 
in what day is it it's Tuesday I'm back into the gallery on Saturday and I will do a small video showing you the outcome oh it's really gorgeous here it is all finished let me do this oh there we go yeah don't we like that so i'm really happy with a lot of the lines a lot of the cells a lot of the shimmer not so happy with a bit of lumping but what i've decided to do is i'm actually going to build up some compound around here into three-dimensional texture and here and then resin the whole lot and um, that's going to be an exciting project too. Oh, gee, the paints worked so well, didn't they? Look even there. Yeah, I wish I was an opera singer, don't I? Yeah. How's your pouring going? What do you reckon if I add compound and a bit of crushed glass and then resin? I'm really into the crushed glass at the moment. I reckon I just should. Okay, fine, I will then. I'll pop this up and then I'll do a video on adding the compound, the crushed glass and the resin. See you there.